Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be back with you. Uh, and I really mean that. It's, it's great to be back here in, Jan in uh, March of 2020. Uh, and we are one week from a legislative session. And I'm going to get to some things on, but I wanted to start, um, as was mentioned, uh, by talking a little bit about uh, COVID-19 or the novel coronavirus. Um, you know, the, the CDC now expects that there will be community spread and actually has been uh, community spread mm -hmm. in certain regions of the United States. And while that's true, the immediate threat um, to the general population across the country and here in Louisiana remains low, although the risk of exposure is higher now than it was uh, just a few days ago because of this community spread. Well, we are not, however, in the United States seeing the same type of spread that several other countries are, uh, obviously, particularly China, uh, Iran, South Korea, uh, and Italy. Just a few minutes ago, I finished a call uh, with Vice President Pence and other governors from around the country uh, to discuss the federal response to the coronavirus, including supplemental appropriations bill, an emergency supplemental appropriations bill that they expect Congress to take up very quickly, potentially with the House of Representatives uh, this week. Uh, it was an informative call. I appreciate the White House and the Vice President um, working to keep us up to date on this evolving situation. Uh, in addition to calls and briefings I have participated in, the Louisiana Department of Health has been in near daily contact with the CDC for weeks now. Uh, and to coordinate and to learn uh, from the federal government, but also what other states are doing uh, to prepare for uh, this particular um, uh, virus. There are more than 90 cases of coronavirus nationwide, uh, and there have been two reported deaths uh, from uh, this novel coronavirus. And I keep saying novel coronavirus because it's, you know, this is not second hand, I mean, it's not second nature to me. I, I, don't, uh, I don't understand all of this, but coronavirus is responsible for 10 to 30 percent of all the common colds that you get. But this is a new strain. This is, that's why they call it the novel coronavirus, um, because it's new and, and we don't have uh, effective treatments for it uh, yet. The good news is about 80 percent of the people who get it re report mild uh, symptoms, like a fever, um, you know, uh, shortness of breath, coughing, um, respiratory uh, ailments, and, and those sorts of things. And then, of course, the people who are most adversely affected are those who are elderly or those who are in some sort of a compromised uh, state of health uh, to begin with. But So what we're talking about is the novel uh, coronavirus. Uh, this morning, I presided over our first meeting of the Unified Command Group uh, that was related to uh, this uh, coronavirus that we're dealing with, um, and it, it was, for all uh, practical purposes, much like a meeting we would have to deal with an approaching um, hurricane or, or other natural disaster, except that the briefings didn't come from the Weather Service, uh, they came from the Office of Public Health. This meeting allowed all of our state agencies to get an update from my health experts about the current situation, also make sure that we're coordinating across state agencies appropriate, uh, as appropriate. Uh, we announced this morning that last week, late last week, we formed a task force of key agency heads and state partners from our unified command group to hone in on every aspect of this response and to make sure Louisiana is doing everything it possibly can to identify cases, to control the spread of this illness, and to respond in a way that protects the public health. The task force is recommending that all state agencies review and update their continuity of operations plans, which were developed in 2012 at GOSEP's direction. Um, and we want to do that so that we can take into account uh, COVID-19. To put this response in context, we, in context, Louisiana has been working on pandemic preparedness for the last 15 years. We have a comprehensive state pandemic plan we have also encouraged pandemic planning throughout the state, both in the governmental sector as well as the private sector. But there are a few important things for the public to know about the novel coronavirus. First, again, we don't have a confirmed case of coronavirus in Louisiana. 
Secondly, when we do have a case, specifically when someone is presumptively positive on a test, uh, and by the way, we do believe it's a matter of when and not if that this will happen, uh, my administration is going to announce that. Uh, in all likelihood, it will be me or it will be someone from the Department of Health. Uh, and so, you know, social media is good for a lot of things, but there's some things it's not very good at. Uh, and I would encourage people not to, not to uh, participate uh, in, in some of the social media activity that's going on now. Uh, but when we have a presumptive positive test in Louisiana, uh, we will disclose that uh, at the state, and we will do it very quickly. I think this is important because the public has heard a lot of concerning information over the past few days and are probably going to continue to hear more of this over the coming weeks or months even about the coronavirus. I hope that people will look for information from good sources like the CDC uh, and avoid the gossip or speculation that we're already starting to see. When it comes to cases of coronavirus in Louisiana, if, if you've not heard it confirmed by the Department of Health, it is not real period. Our aim is to provide information that the public needs to prevent the spread of the illness <clears throat> while protecting the privacy of anyone who may find himself inflicted, infected, I should say, uh, with uh, this particular virus. Already in Louisiana, our health department has been communicated on a regular basis with health providers and doctors to proactively share information about symptoms and also guidance about when someone needs to be tested. I do encourage anyone in the public who wants more information, particularly at the state level, to go to ldh.louisiana.gov slash coronavirus. ldh.louisiana.gov slash coronavirus. We have the capability to test for coronavirus in state, and the Office of Public Health will be handling those tests for providers across the state. Out of an abundance of, uh, an abundance of caution, last, late last week, the testing protocol was expanded. Um, and the, the new testing criteria are fairly broad and most of the people who are going to be administered these tests we fully expect to be negative. That was the case in the, the one individual who was tested over the weekend, um, not, not the novel coronavirus. Uh, but if you present to a health care provider and you have sim symptoms that are consistent with coronavirus and no alternative diagnosis uh, happens, then you will be tested. Uh, and it's, it really is uh, just that simple. Um, and again, we expect to see cases here in Louisiana, so we want people to be prepared uh, for that. Uh, I do want to say that there's absolutely no need to panic. In fact, there's not only is there no need to panic, that's exactly the wrong thing uh, to do, but we should all take this seriously, prepare uh, for this, and arm yourself with the facts and know that you can take the following precautions. And by the way, this is going to sound a lot like what we tell you to do to avoid getting the flu. Because you, you, you contract this virus the same way that you, you, would, um, you would the flu. If you're sick, don't go to work. Don't go to events like this. <laughs> Cover your mouth when you cough. Uh, cough into the crook of your elbow rather than out into or into your hand or out into uh, space. Wash your hands frequently. Um, I'm told wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water. Um, and certainly if you've recently traveled to China, South Korea, Iran, Italy, or Japan um, within the four, last 14 days, and certainly if you experience any fever, cough, or other kind of illness, contact your health care provider as soon as possible and tell them about the symptoms and about the travel. Uh, finally, it is still flu season and your chances of getting the flu are much higher than they are of getting the novel coronavirus. It is still a good idea to get a flu shot if you haven't already done that. Uh, and this will help because in the event that we have the spread of coronavirus, um, we don't need to be dealing with more people with the flu at the same time if we can help it because you're consuming the same uh, treatment. The same, you're putting demand on the same resources that we're going to need for the coronavirus. Now I'm going to take your uh, uh, questions about the coronavirus at the end of my remarks, but I do have just a few more to talk a little bit about uh, the state and the legislative session and how we're going to continue to put the interests of our people first um, 
First, uh, we will be working very hard to pass a responsible budget that prioritizes education as well as other important initiatives like workforce development and health care. You've already seen uh, my proposed uh, spending plan, which includes $25 million in additional funding for early childhood education. So that, that would be on top of the $20 million last year. Uh, so that as uh, when I say last year, last budget, and that's affected this academic year, this fiscal year, and so what you would see uh, next year is a, is a total of $45 million more than we were spending year before last. That does not take into consideration a $33 million federal grant that we will have $11 million each of the next three years. Uh, so for the year that starts July 1st, that would be $56 million more for early childhood. Uh, more than $30 million in new funding for higher education, which, which represents the second time um, after more than a decade, or after a decade of having no new general fund investment in higher education, this would be two years in a row. Um, and a $39 million increase to the MFP, which I am recommending be directed to uh, educators in the form of another pay raise. Unfortunately, we're once again without a recognized revenue forecast by the Revenue Estimating Conference. Uh, we need that in order to know exactly how much money we have to budget. And finally, you need it because you can't pass a budget without it, because the budget would be uh, immediately out of balance. Um, so this conversation is going to be ongoing, and I'm optimistic that the REC will recognize revenue soon and that we're going to be able to move forward. But without the official forecast, we had to put forth an annual spending plan based on the lowest forecast that we can envision coming out of the REC. So we're, it's always the case that when session starts at the very beginning of the budgeting process, but when that session starts without an REC forecast, you're certainly at the very beginning uh, stages of that. Next, I want to highlight some of the bills that will be included in the legislative package. The first one should come as no surprise to anyone. Um, I believe four years ago that seven dollars in the quarter is not an adequate minimum wage. Four years later, it's not an adequate minimum wage. In fact, I think the case has been strengthened uh, that we need to do something in Louisiana to raise the minimum wage. So we will be supporting Senator Troy Carter's bill to make a gradual increase that will begin with uh, with $9 an hour in January 2021 and move to $10 an hour in, Jan in July 2021. Uh, we've fallen behind too far for too long in Louisiana. Congress is out of the business. They've told us that. They haven't increased the minimum wage since mm -hmm. 2009. Uh, it's important that we do this. And we know that an overwhelming majority of the people of Louisiana agree with us on this. Uh, we also know that we need to do some things about the high cost of auto insurance, and I think we ought to focus on making changes that are proven to have a direct impact on the cost of premiums. So I'm, I'll be supporting a series of bills by Senator Jay Luno, all of which prevent insurance companies from using factors like gender or whether the driver is a widow or was deployed in the military to increase a driver's premium. You know, premiums ought to be set on driving records, not on whether someone's poor or female and that sort of thing. It's common sense, and so just the right thing to do. Um, and obviously, we will engage uh, with the legislature on other legislative instruments that could potentially reduce auto insurance premiums as well. I do believe that there's plenty of common ground there that we can explore. The next set of bills will that we'll be supporting will help improve the lives of women across the state. First, a bill by Representative Barbara Carpenter uh, that will prevent employers from retaliating against employees who discuss or disclose their salary and will bar employers from asking the applicant's salary history as a condition of employment. Simply put, I believe eliminating pay secrecy and improving pay transparency are important steps to ensuring that every individual is paid based on their merits and the nature of their work, not on their gender or the payroll of their previous employer. Uh, I also know that we continue to have the largest gender-based pay gap in the country. Uh, that is not good for our state, it's not good for our families, 
and it's not just impacting the ladies of Louisiana, it impacts the entire state, especially those children uh, who are at home uh, being supported uh, by their mothers, whether they have another income earner in the house or not, uh, they're being adversely impacted by this gender gap in pay. Uh, we already know that, that Louisiana has the, the largest pay gap in the country, uh, and I believe when employers use salary history to set pay, it means that women who may be paid less will never catch up with their male counterparts. Uh, no matter their education, their experience, or their skill level, and that needs to change. We're also going to be working to improve workplace accommodations for pregnant women. Oftentimes, women who are pregnant get reassigned to desk duty, or if that's not available, they may lose their jobs altogether. But the reality is that pregnant employees can often continue to do their current duties with small accommodations, like providing a stool to sit on, or temporary assistance with heavy lifting. Uh, sometimes the solution is as simple as allowing for more bathroom breaks. And finally, we'll be promoting the implementation of a maternal mortality review. Uh, this will ensure that any hospital or birthing center has written policies and procedures to investigate any maternal death and to do so in a timely manner. Uh, Louisiana maternal mortality rates exceed the national average, and we know that black women are four times more likely to experience, to experience a pregnancy-related death. This is unacceptable. Uh, we are already making tremendous progress in reducing the number of women uh, who give birth and uh, are suffering from uh, hemorrhage, for example. But there's a lot more that we can do. Um, these are just a few of the priorities that will be included in the legislative package uh, for the session that starts next Monday. Uh, in the coming days, you're going to receive a list with more of our initiatives, and I look forward to talking about all of these bills in greater detail as we enter uh, into the 2020 regular session uh, next month. And of course, I will be addressing the legislature next Monday as well. 